our motto is, if all you can say is it's not so bad, we throw it away. We're looking for that one in 10,000 that's a wow apple, and they don't come along that often. Getting that great consumer experience is certainly number one. There's a lot that goes into that. There's the texture, the flavor, the ability to be stored without loss of that texture and flavor to a significant extent. That's really important. Now the newest variety is First Kiss. Uh, the breeding we did on that was 21 years ago, day in, day out. We've introduced 27 apple varieties in the 110 years that we've been in existence. And I think in those early years, because it was all about survival, winter survival, maybe the quality wasn't as high. It was certainly good for its time. You know, back in that era, they were just, they were desperate to even be able to grow an apple here in Minnesota. So they brought in a bunch of stuff uh, started making some crosses, you know, and just tried to find something that was hardy enough to get through the winter here. But then as we moved into sort of modern apple breeding now, we've really focused on the quality, the eating quality. There's a lot that goes into that. There's, there's the texture, the flavor, the ability to be stored without loss of that texture and flavor to a significant extent. Over the last 30 years, we've certainly changed the way we do business and we have to do business really to be able to get products successfully into the marketplace. We breeders collaborate with uh, folks in the Office of Technology Commercialization and contact all the time with them. The part that many people don't realize is how long it takes us to develop a new variety. And for example, Honeycrisp, which was probably our biggest breakthrough, took 31 years from the time the breeding was done until it was released to the public. So it's really a process of elimination and at the end of all of that, uh, hopefully there's that one diamond that we've gotten down to like first kiss.